As promised, I'm going to be going through a new solution to the Is the King in Check challenge, um, which considers the pieces on the board as vectors to the king. So I started thinking about the chessboard not as a grid uh, with discrete positions, but as a two-dimensional plane. Uh, where you can kind of geometrically express the pieces uh, in relationship to the king. And uh, doing so allows for some interesting uh, ways to filter for the information that we want to solve this challenge. So I'll share that with you now. And if you haven't already done so, I would recommend watching my other video on how to solve this problem using a regex one-liner. I'll put the, the link in the description. So here is the solution. Um, not quite sure where to start. I suppose let's just start at the top. Um, so the first thing we do is we take the two dimensional array of, um, pieces, uh, flatten the array so that we've just got it in a long, uh, non two dimensional, one dimensional array. Uh, and we just get the index of the King. Um, so that'll come back with some value between zero and 63, which indicates the um, position on the board. And then we take uh, N, so we assign that to N, uh, take modulo uh, eight of that, which gives us the X coordinate. And then we do N divided by eight, um, which will then give us uh, the row. Uh, so yeah, take the floor of that so that it, um, gives us the Y coordinate. So we've got King X and King Y. Okay, so then uh, just iterate over all of the positions on the board. Now this time we're looping over the two dimensional array, both in the Y direction for each row and in the X direction uh, for each letter. I've used L there. Um, and then we can take the X and Y values that we get and calculate a Delta uh, value. So this gives us the distance or in the, both the X and the Y direction uh, to the King. So I can just flip over to here to kind of illustrate uh, the kind of thing that is happening. Um, so you've got a King here, uh, coordinate is uh, x zero one two three four y is zero one two three and the knight is uh two two zero one two zero one two and therefore if we take one from the other subtract the x and the y coordinates from each other you get a delta value uh, which uh, is the deflection in the x and y axis so you have a deflection of two one two in the x direction and one in the y direction. Okay, now that we have the delta y and delta x values, we can use that to now calculate things that we're interested in. Um, so I'm interested in the angle and the distance to the king, um, effectively creating a vector to the king. Um, so the first thing I'm calculating is the angle. Um, so I'm using this function called atan2, which is a trigonometric function, and it accepts a uh, point value, so an X and Y coordinate, and it returns back to us the angle that that creates against the X axis. Um, if you had an origin point of zero, zero and drew a line to a point in the two dimensional plane. So X and Y can be both positive or negative. Um, so it can be anywhere in that kind of two dimensional plane. Um, so it could create any angle with the origin point of zero, zero. And this, this function here, um, just gives us that angle in radians. Now, because it's in radians, we have to divide by uh, pi and multiply by 180 to convert that into degrees. Now, if you're not sure what radians are, so I did a bit of engineering. Uh, radians is the, obviously a radius is from the center of a circle to the edge of the circle. And a radian is that same distance as traversed around the circumference of a circle. So you know that um, the ratio of the diameter of a circle to the circumference of a circle is two pi. Therefore, the... Um, the number of radians that fit around a semicircle is exactly pi. So what we'll get back from the atan2 function is a value between um, 
plus pi and minus pi, depending on the uh, whether we're going in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. A tan 2 will return potentially either. Um, and that's why we divide by pi here and then multiply by 180. So that just, that's how that conversion works. Then next, to get the distance to the king, it's just some simple Pythagoras uh, theorem. Um, there's a handy little math.hypot function, which will take the base and the height uh, of a triangle, right angle triangle, um, and will give you the distance of the hypotenuse. Um, so there you go. And finally, it's uh, just a case now well, we're doing maps here, so it's just a case of returning the magnitude that we've calculated, the angle that we've calculated, a reference to the L, which is the piece or space, uh, depending on what we have in that particular uh, place on the board. And we return that. So now the two-dimensional array uh, that we have uh, returned from this section is um, a bunch of vectors. So I'm calling a flat on that just to flatten it all into a single uh, one dimensional array. And I'm just doing a simple filter here um, to find um, anything that is not a space or the king because we don't care about those things. Um, empty squares don't care about those and the king. Well, it's not going to give check to itself, is it? So, OK, we'll get rid of that. Um, and yeah, obviously here I'm just referring to this L essentially um, because it's the second item of this now mapped um, array that we have. OK, so this is where some of the magic happens uh, that I'm quite pleased with. Um, so I've got a sort at work here and I'm doing a reduce um, using a map. Um, and I suppose it'll probably make more sense what I'm doing if I just flip to this diagram. So if you have rearranged the board, the king's here, knight is here. These are the coordinates. If you deduct one from the other, you get minus one, minus one. Um, just bearing in mind, actually, that um, I'm kind of manipulating the order of what I take away from what, uh, just so that it plays a bit more nicely with this a tan two function. So I'm doing x minus the king x, and I'm doing king y minus y. So king x, which is four minus knight x. Hold on, I got that the wrong way around, didn't I? Yeah, piece x minus the king x uh, is minus one. And then we've got king y minus piece y king y which is three minus piece y which is four so we get minus one minus one for the delta uh, values of x and y now if we feed that into the a tan two function we get minus 2.35 radians converting that to degrees we get minus 135 degrees which is represented by this uh here now then if we consider the pieces along this angle at this minus 135 degree angle then if we filter those pieces by the magnitude of the, the vector, so how close they are to the king, we just find the one that's closest. This is going to obscure the um, attack of any of these other bishops. Um, so this knight is going to be the closest piece um, blocking these ones. So... You can see, if you think of um, the angle and the, the size or the magnitude of the vector, if you filter for the closest things on a given angle, that's going to be the piece that blocks the line of sight of all the other pieces on that angle. So once you've got that list of pieces, you just have to check what it is. Um, so in this case, if we've already filtered for the closest piece at this angle, if we know it's a knight, then it's not giving the the king check. Um, if it was a bishop, then it would be given the king check. And that same principle applies to all of the orthogonal and uh, diagonal directions. So if we just get multiples of 90 degrees, um, the closest thing, if it's a rook or a queen, then it's giving the king check. Um, and if it's not, then it's not giving the king check. Similarly on the diagonals as well. So I think that's quite an elegant um, way of thinking about this problem. So the way that actually works um, is I'm doing a sort by the magnitude, I think, 
yeah, the magnitude, um, A and B, and I'm sorting in order from largest to smallest. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing a reduce and I'm starting with a map. Um, so the map keeps a unique, um, one unique item per key that is used. So this value here specifies the key, which is the angle. And now each time we hit, say, 135 degrees, let's say, or minus 135 degrees, um, if we're going in order of magnitude, largest to biggest, we'll start with this uh, bishop, and then we'll overwrite with this bishop, and then we'll overwrite with this bishop, and then finally we'll overwrite with this uh, knight here. So that will be the net result of executing this reduce function. This map will contain items keyed by the angle. And if you queried the map to find the thing that is on like a 45 degree angle or that 100 minus 135 degree angle, it would return back to us the night because that is the last thing that it saw because of the way that we sorted things. Right then. So now we have our beautifully mapped uh, values here, um, we can just perform some tests against them to see if the pieces are giving the king check. Um, so I'm going to start here with this bishop. Um, now, bearing in mind that the angle is a value between minus 180 and plus 180, I'm just adding 180 here so that it's always some positive value. Um, taking the modulo of 90, so it becomes a value between 0 and 90, and um, if that value equals 45, then that means it must be on one of the 45 degree angles, one of the diagonals. So if it's on a diagonal and the piece is a bishop, then it's giving the king check. Simple as that. Return true. Um, similarly, a rook. So same thing with this modulo 90. And if that equals zero, then that means it's on a right angle. So it's either horizontal or vertical. Um, and if it's a rook, then it's giving the king check, bearing in mind this contains only the things that are nearest to the king. Um, so line of sight is already considered. And then this final uh, test is uh, basically a combination of the two. I'm doing modulo 45 because um, for a queen, it's perfectly valid for it to be either on a uh, orthogonal direction or a diagonal direction. So we can just take the modulo of 45 and check that that is equal to zero. So it's on an exact multiple of 45. Um, so if it's a queen, return true. So for knights, we can be somewhat cunning here. Uh, and I'm just checking that the magnitude is equal to a specific value, because if you look at this diagram, um, the position of a knight in relation to a king um, is always going to be two across and one up. So, or obviously different directions, um, but the magnitude of that distance is always going to be a fixed value of um, two squared plus one squared. Um, square rooted. So the square root of five essentially is this distance. So if a piece is square root of five away from the king, then it must be in the position of a knight. So that's a really simple way of checking um, if a knight is giving the king check. If one of our pieces in our list um, has a vector to the king with a magnitude exactly equal to the square root of five. And if that piece is a knight, then it is definitely giving the king check. Now it's the very same concept uh, for a pawn as well. Um, so a pawn uh, can only be a specific distance from the king. Um, specifically, it is going to be the square root of two from the king. Uh, but we do have to take into account uh, that there are only two valid positions. So that are th those are the positions at 45 degrees and 135 degrees. So here and here. And with all of that taken into account, this fully explains the solution uh, that I've come up with. So I hope you enjoyed me going through that. I did manage to compress it down into a more concise solution but it's way more complicated. I've kind of done horrible things 
and I just recorded a little bit of uh, an extra part of this video to explain it all and ended up rambling on for nearly 20 minutes. Um, so I'm going to cut that out and leave it as a separate video for those crazy enthusiasts that want to have their brain um, maimed <laughs> um, by these crazy things that I've done. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing them. It only makes the solution worse. Um, don't know why I do it. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed um, this series of videos. Um, please comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it's really quite rewarding um, hearing from everyone. And uh, I like to impart what little wisdom I have uh, to others. Um, so yeah, please subscribe and comment and I will catch you on the next video.